Hello everybody and welcome to another new player guide. Today we're going to be talking about Silas Marsh. If this is your first time seeing one of our new player guide videos, they are built with two copies of the core set and the entire cycle in which that investigator came. So this one we're obviously doing the Innsmouth Conspiracy and two copies of the core. If you only have um, one copy of the core set, we recommend picking up another one or proxying the cards you don't have. It will help you more uh, if your deck is more consistent. Um, yeah, it's just consistency is key to winning and coming on top. I don't think we have any uh, taboo cards here, so I'll say it anyway. Uh, if you're wondering about what the taboo list when you're just starting out, screw it, who cares? Just pretend it doesn't exist. So this week I'll talk about Silas because Silas is my boy. Uh, he has two brain and two book, so like, don't do those. I mean, you're gonna have to do brain, but we'll worry about that later. But he has four fist and four foot, so he is good at fighting and running away from his problems. His ability is after you reveal a chaos token during a skill test you're performing, return a skill you committed to this test to your hand, limit once per round. So, if you fail, a skill test that you would like to keep your skill card for, you could return it to your hand. Or, if you would pass that skill test without that skill and you want to still use it in the future, you can return it to your hand. This gives you kind of a lot of skill test security and a lot of different ways in which you could take Silas. You could either do like um, uh, a thing where you just like, it's like you have insurance for all of your skill tests. So like you can like, you can make some wild choices when it comes to it, depending on the token you draw. He also has a bunch of stuff that we'll get into later. Um, some kind of some synergy with his skill test and his ability that makes Silas a little bit weird. His Elder Sign token is uh, uh, plus zero. You may commit a skill from your discard pile to this test. After this test ends, return that skill to your hand instead of discarding it. That's a sick Elder Sign ability uh, for Silas, and it's tons of fun when it goes off. His deck building pool is Survivor card 0 to 5, Neutral 0 to 5, and Innate Skills 0 to 2. His personals is the Sea Change Harpoon. Commits for a fist and a uh, wild. It takes up a hand slot, and even though he's holding it with two hands in the picture, don't worry about that. Action Fight. You get plus one fist for this attack. If you committed one or more skills to this test, this attack deals plus one damage. So even if you bring the skill back to your hand, you still committed a skill card to this test so you will get that plus one damage. And when the skill test ends, you may return Sea Change Harpoon to your hand to return all your committed skills to your hand instead of discarding them. Uh, it is a bit pricey, so uh, if you want to be able to, looking at recur your Sea Change Harpoon over and over and over again, you're going to want to make sure you have the resources for it. Silas's Net is a two-cost uh, item tool asset that takes up a hand slot, fist, uh, sorry, foot and wild. As an action, you can evade. You get plus one foot for this evasion attempt. If you succeed, you can and committed one or more skills to the skill test. You may automatically evade another enemy engaged with you. When the skill test ends, you may return Silas' net to your hand to return all your committed skills to your hand instead of discarding them. So makes both of his, uh, his harpoon and his net makes him do five for both of his relevant stats, which is a very nice number to be at, not even counting the skills that you're gonna be committing to it. Man, uh, how many snakes could you put in the net? I know, eh? He's just great <laughs> wrangling them up. Get in here, sit over here. Uh, his weakness is Siren Call, revelation put into your threat area. As additional cost to commit one or more cards to a skill test, you must pay one resource for each matching skill icon those cards have. Double action, discard Siren Call. So this card, you just wanna like get rid of it as soon as you can, as soon as you have a moment. Even like if an enemy deals meat damage, because he has nine uh, damage and five horror, so he like he's a bit squishy on the horror side, but that's what we're like, if you have access to Pete Sylvester, that comes in great, or other um, horror healing effects, uh, which aren't too common in uh, Survivor, and just at least with this card pool, but like if you have access to Dunwich Legacy and you can get um, Pete Sylvester, oh boy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just, just get rid of this as soon as you can. Yeah, it's worth it's worth noting that when they say matching icons, they don't need, mean icons on the skill card that match each other. They mean icons on the skill card that match the test that you're performing. Mm -hmm. uh, just yeah. throwing that out there. It's, yeah. a, it's a mistake I've seen a couple of people make. Uh, man, thank God I haven't played this card uh, yet because you would have seen me make that mistake as well, probably. 
Um, I'll throw these ones to Travis. You can take okay. these ones. Uh, we got Mariner's Compass here. Um, there's quite the... Uh, just one copy, though. There's quite a bit of competition for Silas's hand slots. Um, this costs three to play. Takes up a hand slot. As an action, you can exhaust it to investigate. And if you have no resources after the investigation, then you get to get... Or after you succeed the investigation, you get to discover an additional clue. And as a lightning bolt during the investigation attempt, you can spend a resource to get plus one book for the attempt up to three times. Um, you shouldn't have to investigate too much playing Silas, but this, like, sometimes you gather. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this, this does a good job of that. Like, you play a little bit of a, a flex character. Um, and you don't mind not having no re not having any resources, not have no resources too often because a very large chunk of your deck is skills and skills do not cost resources to commit unless you have your siren thing in play, but you shouldn't. So just a nice little flex option there for you. Uh, for the accessory slot, we got this uh, token of faith. Um, this is here because we zoomably, when you are playing the uh, when you're playing um, with the Innsmouth Conspiracy cards, especially if you only have that cycle and the star decks or the core sets, someone's probably going to be playing curse cards. <laughs> yeah. Um, this one is two to play and is reaction after skill test ends in which one or more curse or auto fail tokens are revealed. You can exhaust it to add that many blessed tokens to the chaos bag. Um, this card doesn't like always do things, but it is nice support, um, especially with some of the other upgrade cards you'll be playing in your deck. The Keep Faith here is in a similar boat where... It's like a nice card, but not super synergistic with anything you have going on right now. Cost two to play. It's fast. You can play during any lightning bolt window, and you just add four blast tokens to the bag. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. Last card here is our first bless payoff card, the beloved. This commits for a brain, a foot, and a wild. Um, the brain in particular is important for Silas. And this one is. I'm just going to pull it up so I don't screw it up because I typically do. It's got a lot of words. <laughs> yeah. If a blessed token is revealed during this test, you can remove it from the game. To replace that token's effect with the following, you automatically succeed. So instead of getting plus two to the test and removing the token after, you uh, can remove the beloved from the game to just pass your test. Mm -hmm. um, you can also choose to just have the beloved go to your discard pile. Um instead and just treat it as a normal blessed token if that's something you want yep but but can you automatically succeed the test and then put the beloved back into your hand with silas's effect no you cannot not this no. one you have to remove it from the game and also and also yeah these uh th this is the thing and actually i think this next one predestined uh, i can talk about this one yep. so uh, your blessed token also still counts as a blessed token though i believe with the beloved for your other effects i care about it Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just changes the effect, not what it is. Yeah, just with all the Silas stuff, you're always you always got to ask yourself like, does the effect still trigger if I return this to my hand? And I always have to check each time because it's a little bit tricky unless you memorized it. And I should memorize it because I play Silas a bunch, but I haven't. So this one, if you remove it, uh, it, it won't still trigger for the benefit. Also because of what Travis said, you have to remove it. So as well. Um, then we got predestined. Max one committed per skill test. You, you may commit predestined to any type of test. If this test fails, either add two blessed tokens to the chaos bag or remove two cursed tokens from the chaos bag. This is just like another sort of take heart style card where uh, you play this card. Um, if, you, if you're if you like probably going to fail a test, you'll be like, yeah, I can at least get two, uh, two blessed tokens out of this, right? Like I have to do a brain test, brain like... Three, I'm probably going to fail this. Let's just put this predestined in and get two blessed or add two curse tokens or remove two curse tokens from the bag. Sick. Also Brand. nice with Silas where you can commit to a test and then, sorry, you can commit to any test, especially with your uh, sea change harpoon and Silas's net. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you do pass, you just pick it up. Yep. 
Yeah, or again, you can just use it as something to use for your net or harpoon every test. Yeah, that's uh, that's the uh, the fun of Silas. Just you can be like, you know what? No, no, I I don't need this anymore. Get back in my hand, you dumb predestined. You're not going off yet because you I, I don't want to waste you. It's that take heart security. Bryn, here uh, I'll pass these ones to you. All right, we got the baseball bat, which is a two costed asset that takes up both our hand slots. As an action, we can fight. We get plus two punch for the for this attack. It deals one plus one damage. Uh, if we reveal a skull or the auto fail token, we discard our baseball bat because it's broke. Mm -hmm. uh, sad. <laughs> sad. However, it does let us fight at six. Yeah, that's high. That's a pretty big number. Big bonk. For the low, low cost of two resources. Just don't break it the first time. Yeah, just don't break it. Yeah. But it's easy. Forehead. Don't just don't break it. <laughs> just don't fail. Uh, we got the rabbit's foot, which is the opposite of this. It's a one costed asset that has a reaction after a skill test fail after you fail a skill test, you can exhaust it to draw a card. It takes up your lot. Uh, this one is yet yeah, just fail. <laughs> just just do it. Um, helps keep your helps keep your hand full and in a skill heavy deck like Silas, that is often the challenge, mm -hmm. is making sure that you have enough skills to continue passing tests turn after turn. And then we've got Look What I Found, which is a two-costed event. Fast, play after you fail an investigation by two or less, discover two clues, or, yeah, by, t by two or less, discover two clues at your location. Uh, so this one is mostly good because if you are investigating a location with two shroud it is not possible to fail it by two or less because the difficulty of the test was two and your skill value cannot go lower than zero mm -hmm. uh, that being said you can probably also make this one work a little less efficiently on locations that have a shroud of three but uh, it's just a just an option to help out with the other part of the, the part of the game that does not involve managing monsters. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've got Cunning Distraction, which is a five-costed event. Evade, automatically evade all enemies at your location. This, uh, this one's, it, it isn't good all the time, but when it's good, it is one of the best cards you've ever seen. Yeah, and it uh, also doubles up as another Guts yeah, um, yeah. if you need it, which you probably yeah, know with Silas. Like, <laughs> especially, like, a big thing about, uh, I, because I play, I'm the survivor player of this group, and with a lot of, like, with my mindset and the survivor mindset, there's a lot of no fear of the mythos phase, because if you fail, that's okay, right? Because, like, that's kind of, like, what your build is, right? Like, you're, you can do well if things go bad. You have the luckies to back you up. However, with a limited collection, especially with someone like Silas, who only has five horror, you do have to, unfortunately, be scared of the Mythos phase like every other class. In, well, not every other class, but like by most of the other classes in the game, right? Like you have to worry about what shows up. Uh, when you have a bigger collection, this worry becomes less of a problem for like the majority of the survivor characters. Um, however, um, with Silas, the more guts you can get with a limited collection, the better. And I think Travis has drawn the Guts Lottery this, this week. So, Travis, I'll hand this page to you. Uh, we got emergency cash. Uh, you need money to play your stuff, and this gives you money. So that's that's really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, next up, we got Lucky. This one is one money to play. It's fast. You play when you fail a skill test, and it gives you plus two. Uh this is just a nice little insurance button you hold in your hand, and then when you fail a test you don't want to, sometimes you don't. It's good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, then we got Guts. Uh, Guts is a skill card that commits for two brain and max one per test, and if you succeed the test, you draw a card. Uh, this is important because when the game attacks you in the Mythos phase, it will attack your brain specifically because the brain has no in inherent use compared to the other three stats. Um, so that is the one that you will be making the most, most kinds of tests for in the Mythos phase. And two is not going to cut it. <laughs> Lastly, we got uh, Manual Dexterity here, which is 
its guts but for feet mm -hmm. and uh you know Silas likes to evade stuff sometimes so yeah this helps him with that and then the great thing as well with all these the neutral skills is that um if you fail you can just put it back into your hand assuming you haven't done that yet and then still use your guts again next turn. Like, if you draw the autofail or a minus four, and you're like, hey, I'll just take this back and do it again next time. Bryn, I'll throw these ones to you. Uh, we've got overpower, which is guts, but for punch. Uh, punching enemies is the best way to deal with them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it should be. It should always be your first uh, Your first choice, is can I, can I deal with this enemy by killing it? If the answer is no, then, our, then you probably want to run away from it. Mm -hmm. But uh, this lets you punch at six, eight if you have the bat, uh, seven if you've got the sea change harpoon. And it also does, qualifies as the skill that must be committed for the sea change harpoon to deal extra damage. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of important. Unexpected uh courage. So Sorry, I have a small note about the. Uh, so when Bryn said that, like punching things is the best way to deal with them, this is true. Uh, and Silas is clearly intended to be a, a monster fighter in the survivor class. But the survivor class, especially with limited card pool, doesn't uh, have the same options as a traditional guardian mm -hmm. or to a lesser extent mystics do to burst down larger enemies. And it's not uncommon for you to have to like evade an enemy. Uh, either to turn off its retaliate or just so it doesn't hit you during the enemy phase and then like chip it down over a turn or two yeah ultimately what it also does what silas's stat uh, um, allotment also gives you is the power of like choice like say for example tony morgan no oh, that's a bad example he's really good say another four fist fighter <laughs> is given an enemy and they're like, this enemy doesn't have hunter i'm on a location we're never going to come back to but my foot is two I'm going to have to spend some of my time and resources killing this guy. Silas instead could say, you know what? This dude's just going to live here. I'm going to evade him and walk away, right? So, like, mm -hmm. with Silas, you kind of have to, like, you get to make those decisions with that because it's it's true, especially with a limited collection. Even with a full collection, survivor damage output is nowhere near a rogue or a guardian's output. Yeah, like, fighting, killing enemies is, like, the best solution because in most cases, because it permanently answers them. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is not always the best solution. Mm -hmm. so. I also just have to right. say, the art, I've never realized how ridiculous the art on Overpower is. Uh, Silas Marsh in this like, <laughs> 17th century ship is being attacked by an octopus. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> he's, got, he's, he's got it, though. He's oh, got yeah. it. oh, he's definitely got yeah. it. Yeah. How can we tell? His shirt is off. Yeah, because his shirt is off. He's here, to, he's here to close. Uh, and I think we interrupted on Unexpected Courage, but it's just more stats, and it's a skill yep. card, and that's good for Silas. Like, yeah, it can be thrown at any test. Yeah. All right. Anything I'll, that you need to do. We'll start talking about the upgrades. I'll take these ones because, yeah. All right. Unrelenting. This card's great. Uh, and uh, I, I, I think it's very strong. Uh, even outside of Silas, this is a great red card. It's a one, one experience skill that commits for a wild. After you commit it to a skill test, search the chaos bag for up to three non autofail chaos tokens of your choice and seal them on Unrelenting. If all three tokens sealed on Unrelenting are plus one, zero, bless, and or elder sign tokens, draw two cards. Uh, release all tokens sealed here after the test ends. Uh, this card, no matter what, you're going to draw to um, if you pass or fail and have sealed the right tokens. Of that note, you could use Unrelenting to seal like the minus five, um, the minus four, and just like sure up that you have it. Or you could just look at this card as just more card draw, which is what it is. And it's also, um, it kind of works... Um, I forgot what I what I said in that last video where I talked about it, but like it, it, it offers a bit more security for when you're doing something like um, like your your take heart because if you pass your take heart test or even your predestined test when you commit it to it and you've already returned a skill this turn, 
you don't get the value out of that card. This card, no matter what gives it to you, will also make it more likely for you to fail because it brings out the positive tokens, which means you can use your look what I found and get uh, two cards, two clues for a test that you wanted to fail anyway. That's pretty sweet. Silas is also in the art battle lane, a deep one. That's a deep one hybrid, sorry. Or is that actually just a deep one? Who cares? He has flippers on his feet and they're battling in the rain and it looks sweet. Uh, Signum Crucis, commit only to a skill test you're performing and only if the difficulty of that test is higher than your base skill value. A two experience commits for a wild. After you commit Signum Crucis to a skill test, add X blessed tokens to the chaos bag. X is the difference between the test difficulty and your base skill value. So this is awesome for like um, whenever you have to test uh, your brain. Uh, it'll be very beneficial there. In addition, this is one of those cards that I said was a bit weird with Silas, where you can commit this card to a skill test, add the blessed tokens, and then bring Signum Crucis back into your hand to do it again later. Uh, the, skill, the, the blessed tokens are added when you commit it to the skill test, which is before the reveal chaos tokens. So the only thing you lose when you take this card away is the wild symbol that comes from it. So this one you can recur with Silas's ability and still get the blessed tokens each time. This is not like crazy powerful like some of the other ones can be, mostly because uh, you're gonna have to make bad tests for this one to go. But this is one that you can then bring back and like use in the mythos phase when you need to want to add some blessed tokens to it. And honestly, recurrable ways to add blessed tokens for no cost is pretty, pretty sick. Third time's a charm. This is a one experience, two cost event that commits for a brain, a fist, and a foot. Fast, play when a skill test of your location begins. Twice during this test, when an investigator reveals a chaos token, they may cancel it, return it to the chaos bag, and reveal a new chaos token. It's Wendy Adams. Uh, yeah, just some test security. I think this card is actually really nice too. It's like, it, it could end up being a lucky, right? I, get, I think it's, it's a pretty nice card. Speaking of lucky, here's Jacob Morrison. He has two damage and two horror, three cost, three experience, takes up an ally slot, commits for a wild. He does not ready during the upkeep phase. As a reaction, when you would fail the skill test, exhaust Jacob Morrison, you get plus two skill value for that test. So it's a lucky. Nice. Uh, after a blessed token is revealed during, from a chaos bag during a skill test you are performing, ready Jacob Morrison. So he's not like, you have to do some work to get like full power from this guy, but like, like two luckies out of him and then the damage and the horror soak that's a pretty good deal for three uh money and three experience the more you get after that like the just the better he's gonna be and if you can like consistently ready the guy oh boy let's go jacob morrison he's also on this like he's a coast guard captain so i feel like i have to play him in silas so i feel like you should also play him in silas if you're going for a blessed heavy build huh <sighs> I can keep taking these ones if you guys want. I don't mind. I can read the cards easier. And I imagine I'm one of the few. Go ahead. This is your, this is your video. Yeah. Yes. Right. This is the guy you like. Ancient Covenant. This is a two experience asset. It's a covenant, so you get one per deck. When an investigator location resolves a blessed token during a skill test, exhaust Ancient Covenant. Do not reveal another token as part of that blessed token's effect. So now your blessed tokens are just plus two. Plus two tokens seem pretty good. They're even better than plus one tokens. Uh, if you're going on a heavy blessed build, which you kind of have to with limited collection, I think Ancient Covenant is a great pickup for Silas. Like, I do think Silas will be better outside of a limited collection because you get more innate skills, you can do more busted things. But I do think he can still work, especially with Signum Crucis and Ancient Covenant, to take full advantage of his, the blessed tokens that are in there. And you get Jacob Morrison going and like, oh baby, sounds delicious. Dig deep. Uh, this is a two cost, four experience, commits for two brain and two foot. Uses two resources, replenish these resources at the start of each round. As a lightning bolt, you can spend a resource from your resource pool or from dig deep. You get plus one brain and plus one foot for this skill test. This is really good in Silas. This is a, a guts every mythos phase. That's fantastic. Uh, in addition, you can use it for foot when you need to get over an enemy where the foot's a little bit high. But using this just for plus two brains, so now you're at four each mythos phase, that's juicy. It is exp expensive experience-wise, but you know what? You're a survivor. You don't care about that. Like, four experience, you're like, all right, I'm... That's, that's totally fine because everything else I'm looking at buying costs one or two. 
Harmony Restored is a three cost event, commits for two brains, so worst case scenario, it's a guts. It's a fortune and a bless. Search the chaos bag for X curse tokens and return them to the token pool. X is the number of blessed tokens in the chaos bag. Gain one resource for each curse token removed this way. If you want to piss off your the curse players, this is the way to do it. You can just remove all the curse tokens. They've worked so hard to get in because there is only one righteous path to take, and that is bless tokens. Uh, this is some, like, realistically, removing the curse tokens is not, like, the exciting part of this card to me. The exciting part of this card is that it can, like, hopefully pay itself back and then some. So, like, if you can remove, like, five chaos tokens, five curse tokens out of here, and that's, you get two resources out of that. And then those minus twos are gone, and that's nice. I think this one's kind of just, like, looking at this one is, like, stopping curse tokens is nice, but looking at the money you get out of it is also really nice. Butterfly effect. Fast. So it's a zero cost, one experience, commits for a wild, fast event. Play when a chaos token with the symbols revealed during a skill test at your location. You or the performing investigator may either, may either commit a, a card to the skill test or return a card they committed to this test to their hand. Wait a minute. That's Silas Marsh, right? That in, and I see right there. So what this does is it gives you a bit more, um, another use of your ability, ultimately. Um, you can look at it like that. It's just one experience. Now I can use my ability twice a turn if I want to. Or alternatively, um, you can give your ability to someone else so they can enjoy playing Silas Marsh for one test. Or you can use this as even some security in terms of passing a test because you can commit another card to it. And maybe it's a card that cares about passing a skill card. And then you can just be like, it's also, you can even just commit a card. It doesn't even have to be a skill card for it. So yeah, just more Silas. Can't go wrong with card, more of a good thing. Sorry, Travis? The card's also pretty neat for, like, uh, for some of the, like, so you can play on a skill test, and then if you fail, you can commit your beloved after. Or you can uh, yeah. see whether you need to commit a skill test to not fail by enough for your look what I found to trigger. Yeah. I think, like, um, the tr a true nice thing about this card is um, more is, like, <clears throat> sorry, you look at it like another Lucky, right? Like, that's kind of, like, where this card can really be good. It's, like, another copy of Lucky in your deck that just takes two cards. Yeah, you just got to use, uh, use on the important tests. Yeah, exactly. Not just, I don't want to take one damage. Oh, okay. Watchful Peace with a, <clears throat> a Silas Marsh wearing a shirt. Three experience for one cost, spirit blessed event that commits for two brain. As additional cost to play a watchful piece, search the chaos bag and cards from in play for a total of five blessed tokens and return them to the token pool. Fast, play when the drawn counter cards step of the mythos phase would begin. Skip this step of the mythos phase. So, oh my God, Travis, I'll pass this one to you because I need to drink water. All right, which one? Watchful, watchful piece. piece, I've already explained it. Just what, why is this card strong? Oh, yeah, so, uh, if nobody draws cards, it's like the game didn't get a turn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, yeah. putting, like, pulling out five, so, this card pairs really well with, uh, like, a Bless-centric guardian, like Sister Mary, where she wants to seal a bunch of Bless tokens on her card, because mm -hmm. then you can, like, kind of hold them until you want to play this, because you can pull them off cards and play as well, um until you need them to ensure that you don't like not have enough when you need them <laughs> it also pairs well with favor of the sun where you can seal three on it to make sure that you have at least three for when you want to play this and yeah just the game not taking a turn is real good yeah there's also some things you can do as well like if there's one in there keep faith that adds does that add four am i right with that like, if you have, like, some in there already and then you keep faith, it's just now, like, a two-card combo to... I mean, you need to have a bit more in there, so it's, like, a two-and-a-bit card yeah, combo it. um, to just skip the mythos, skip the draw and counter cards part of the mythos phase, which is the hard part of the mythos phase, TBH. Next, we got Shrine of the Morai. This is a one-cost, three-experience event. Fortune Bless Curse commits for, like, every symbol but Fist and Wild. Attached to your location uses three offerings. Attached location gains lightning bolt. 
Draw the top card of the encounter deck and exhaust Shrine of the Morai and spend one offering. Return up to two cards with a total combined level of five or less from your discard pile to your hand. This card seems pre uh, pretty strong. Uh, it's the drawing a uh, top card of the encounter deck is like not the end of the world, especially for Silas. And not especially for Silas because a brain test could just ruin his day. But like if he draws an enemy, he can just like solve that problem right away. And like already just looking at stuff like grabbing a watchful piece and keep faith already seems like a pretty good two card combination to uh, grab here. And anyone can do it. Anyone uh, can come to the shrine as long as it's unexhausted and use it. This card's a bit strange. Mm -hmm. I would love to know what you guys think about this card. I think that... I think this is one of those cards that's not worth it unless you're doing something degenerate with it. I agree. Just kind of slow. I mean, recursion often tends that way. Yeah, and I mean, even, like, one of those things, like, even just, like, say you did Watchful Peace and um, Keep Faith, like, that's still very expensive. Like, there's got to, like, there's obviously more degenerate things you can do with this, um, in this thing, like, with this limited collection, that's, like, one of the things that's jumping out to me. But, um, I mean, like, if that interests you, go for it. I just personally think it's just a little yeah. slow. yeah. I think it depends what uh, what you're what you're recurring. Like there are a lot of level five cards that are very very strong, mm -hmm. uh, and getting to do them a second time because normal normally like yes, red is very good at getting its own cards back, but they have to be either red cards or level zero cards. Mm -hmm. uh, this one allows you to get cards from any color for any investigator. Yeah. Right. So like. Yeah, Don't, you can like put uh, it down and let your purple yeah. investigator get back like right of equilibrium and ward of radiance or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or even just throw it down and be like, how many times can you play that deny existence? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use it to get back, assuming you've got them. Well, you can't because you can't play purple cards, but, you know, like double, uh, double ward of protection or. Mm -hmm. all, ki all kinds of things even if uh, even if you're just using this to return uh, return like any of your any any probably any two of your upgraded skills yeah it's probably a, still a pretty good deal yeah mm-hmm mm-hmm like yeah, if you, it's if just the you question. end up uh, sorry you go Brian yeah uh, so like if you are returning most most of your upgraded skills can be committed to a brain test. So like if the game throws a brain test at you and you lose one of the skills you returned for it, fine. But also if you draw an enemy, you're just like, good, this is what I was here for. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Card's a weird one. It is a weird one. But maybe we'll I'll try it out sometime and we can like try to do something dirty with it and see what happens. Faye is the next one here. It's a one experience, innate cursed, so we can finally see a, a different colored card that Silas can play with a limited pool. Commits for a brain and two wild, so three brain. That's really comfortable. And if a cursed token is revealed during the skill test, you may return Faye to your hand when this test ends. Just a nice strong skill. I think it works like well for the majority of skill-based investigators, and Silas is no exception to that. Up next, we got Spirit of Humanity. This is a two cost, two experience asset. Takes up a spell slot. It's a ritual, blessed, and cursed. As a lightning bolt, you can exhaust it and take one damage and one horror. Add two blessed tokens to the chaos bag, or exhaust Spirit of Humanity and add two cursed tokens to the chaos bag and heal one damage and one horror. I think this is a nice option for a limited collection to keep Silas Marsh alive. Because um, with only two brain and no Pete Sylvester to keep you safe, you will be taking horror damage. And there's like no really great allies, or else I imagine Travis would have included them in the base deck for Silas. So a Spirit of Humanity is a nice way, and adding two Chaos tokens, um, as you, there's ways to fix that, like with Harmony Restored, so it's not like the worst case scenario. Do you know what's better than not dying? Drawing a minus two curse token and then returning your fate to your hand. That sounds like a pretty good deal to me. 
I actually really like the design of that card. Um, mm. It fits in along with like the Priest of uh, Two Face or whatever, where they allow, like, it really opens up um, what colors you can, what investigators can play these synergies. Yeah. So if you have, uh, if you want to build like a curse deck with Agnes, for example, you can. This card is really good with her. Mm -hmm. You can just do extra damage to things while playing curse tokens in the bag. Yeah. And then, you know, you or you can just. Or sorry, you can do extra damage, put blessed tokens in the bag, and then heal yourself to put curse tokens in the bag. What you want to fix your paradox um, and covenant up? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, yeah, I actually no, it, with you. I think Spirit of Humanity is going to become like one of those cards that over time just we look at better and better because. It's also just like I know, actionless. I know. I already think pretty highly. Pardon? I said I already think pretty highly of this one. Yeah. No. I mean, but like, it's it, it's one of those things that we can speak highly of it, but then do we actually play it? Right. Like that's the difference. Mm -hmm. Because truthfully, we can speak highly of something, but if we never play it, do we actually believe what we're saying? Is what I'm saying, right? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Um, because it's just actionless healing, actionless damage and horror, like you said in X Magnus Baker, and it feeds both um, archetypes. So that's sick. You know who else this card is sick in? Who? Carolyn Fern. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm liking this whole idea of just like every turn, it's just choosing the different mode that you didn't choose last turn. Seems like it's going to be mm -hmm. fun. Uh, all right. Uh, Travis, why don't you take these ones and we'll close out this Silas video. Yeah, yeah. This one's uh, Will to Survive, 4 to play, 3 experience stick in your deck. It's for a Fist and a Wild, which is not negligible, especially for Silas. Fast, you play during, only during your turn, and until the end of the turn, you just don't draw Chaos Chits when you're making a test. Which is like, it's not great when you're doing the, the Blessing for uh, Survivor, but to be honest, the Blessing for Survivor is more just support. It's more about the actual blessed tokens and getting the plus two than using them for something else or for uh, additional effects. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just being able to guaranteed punch something or investigate three times or just doing three tests is really good. Not failing is good. Yeah. Um, next up, we got the level two lucky. The only difference between level zero and the level two is you get to draw a card, which is uh, a small addition but surprisingly relevant for Silas where we talked about uh, he wants to commit lots of cards and keeping cards in hand, in hand can be a little bit tough for him. This helps with that. Mm -hmm. Lastly, we got Close Call here. It's two to play, two experience to stick in your deck. You fast, or it's fast to play, and you play after uh, a non-weakness, non-elite enemy at your location is evaded, so you don't have to be the one to evade it, but with Silas's foot, it's probably going to be you. Mm -hmm. And you shuffle the enemy into the encounter deck. This is a nice way to... Uh, Turn leverage and evasion test into a, like, quote unquote kill of a monster. Yeah. Give it like it's like a permanent answer through an evasion test. Mm -hmm. Sick. All right. Well, that's Silas Marsh. And that's also the end of the new player guides until, uh, well, I guess realistically August, like when the new cycle comes out. So. We'll see you all for more of those when uh, Edge of the Earth, that's what it's called, right? I haven't yeah. internalized the name of the new cycle yet. I suppose even calling it a cycle is the wrong word for it, but... It's still a cycle. Yeah, that one's going to be nice because like, we get the whole thing at once and then we know it's just like everyone has them. It's going to be a lot easier for us to make the content for it. So that's exciting. We can mm -hmm. just be like, here, it's all here. Go, have fun. Um... Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys very soon. Uh, the next up on our docket for this series is we're going to be doing the five um, blessed and cursed archetypes, archetype videos, one for each color, um, starting with Guardian, going all the way back to Survivor. So get ready for us to spend a while talking about all the blessed and cursed cards you can get here. They're going to be coming out at a fast schedule like this. So every Saturday and every Tuesday or Wednesday until we get them all done. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.